Guys, you got Taylor and Josh here with Flycast. We're out here on the Roaring Fork with Avid Max. We're doing a little streamer fishing, what with fall coming up. And for those of you that don't know, Flycast is a uh, river reporting and forecasting business. We cover most of the major waterways in Colorado, namely the Colorado Basin, the Arkansas, South Platte, as well as a number of tributaries and front range creeks. We're out here looking to get into some big fish and get some chases on some streamers. So as far as condition goes, you know, we're, we're getting into fall here. Air temperatures are dropping. As a result, water temps are dropping as well, which is, is a good thing for trout. You know, we're getting longer days on the water. Uh, flows are dropping, you know, a little bit, but, you know, they hold, should hold pretty steady through, through the rest of the winter. Um, as far as today goes, you know, a lot's changed in the last couple of days. We're out here at the Roaring Fork. Flows have dropped 50 to 100 CFS or so in the last couple of days. Uh, you know, which, you know, it's a little bony as far as floating goes, but fishing-wise, you know, it hasn't, hasn't really impacted us much. Uh, you know, the morning was great, and, you know, I'll let Josh give us a little uh, info there in terms of what was working. Yeah, so, uh, as Taylor said, we're fishing the Roaring Fork uh, this morning. Um, and so flows are about 550, 560 CFS right now. Um, and the forecast is calling for a lower barometric pressure, um, but also sunny skies. So we kind of had an idea ahead of time that um, the morning fishing was going to be good for streamers. Um, and then with the, the decrease of cloud cover, we we're going to start having a little bit harder of time. Um, picking up fish on, on those streamers. So uh, we started out hot this morning. I mean, um, black and olive articulated streamers were uh, doing great. So that's enough with the, uh, the forecast and the, the conditions. You know, let's, let's get a little bit into the gear side of things. We're out here with, with Avid Max. They're an awesome fly shop down in Centennial, Colorado. You know, they've got this huge online presence uh, along with their brick and mortar shop. You know, whatever you need, whether it's flies, reels, rods, outfits, watercrafts, you name it, they are in the game to hook you up, whatever you need. So check them out. Awesome, guys. Thanks, Flycast, for providing us with a nice, accurate, and up to date report about what's going on. Now it's myself, Steve, and Max here from Avid Max to talk to you a little bit about what fishing streamers from a boat might look like. So to dive into like the tips, techniques, and tactics um, on how to effectively fish streamers from a drift boat is Max here. Thanks, Steve. Of I'm happy to be out here on a weekday, you know? There's always something about being out on the river on a weekday that makes you feel good. Less crowd. Less crowds, you know, less boats to deal with. Yeah. Uh, boat ramps aren't jammed up. So happy to be out here, um, and we're gonna dive into the tactics a little bit deeper. One of the things that's very important when fishing from the boat, uh, one of the first things I tell my clients every day 
um, is that to make sure that they have good line management. Um, so that's just making sure that you don't have a bunch of line out of your out of your reel unless you're casting that amount of line. Uh, especially when we're streamer fishing and uh, it can be a little bit more technical because you are moving the line and are moving the flies a lot more. Uh, you need to be able to, you know, not get caught up at any point, especially if you do hook into a bigger fish, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you're not wrapped around anything on the boat, wrapped around the back of the reel. Um, so a way to prevent that is when you're casting is if I'm holding the fly line in my left hand as I'm casting with my right hand, I'm going to just make a loop and let the line slide through the loop in my hand so that I can put pressure on that fly line and stop the fly before it hits the bank. Um, so I'm sure you'll see some footage of it, but really trying to like pound the banks um, I'm going to make like a downstream mend. Uh, there's not many situations where a small bait fish or a sculpin or something like that will be fighting a current going upstream. So I really want to make sure that that fly is coming downstream across the fish's face. Um, depending on what kind of you know conditions you're in, you know I think it varies very much day to day. Really got to uh, dial it in as far as trying as much as you can to kind of figure out what's right that day. Um, I think when the fly initially hits the water, it's very important to move that fly a substantial amount of distance. Um, and it could just be like a foot to two feet, uh, but using that left hand to like really strip that fly um, as it hits the water. So like you stop it and then you pull it and that makes a big strip and you know, movement of that fly coming off the bank. And that alone, you know, might just be enough to like trigger a strike right then. Um, as we keep floating down that same spot, you know, if we divide a bead up into, I don't know, 50 yards or so, I want to put in as many casts as I can into the bank as we're going through there. There's not too many times that the streamer is going to be down to the correct depth where I'm going to get a take out into the middle of the current. You know, unless I'm standing and like wade fishing and, you know, swinging like I would be for steelhead or something. I want to get as many casts as I can work in that bank and just systematically breaking it up and hitting every pocket, every pool, every rock that I can find. Anywhere there's structure, there should be a fish kind of like lurking, waiting to ambush something. Um, so that's another thing to like really consider is that they will ambush, you know, their prey and they want to be not seen until it's too late. And uh, that's their opportunity to, you know, get a big meal like that. One thing to reiterate, I think is important, like, you know, to the point of you saying get back in that zone and you know breaking a, a section up into a beat and saying I want to get as many casts as possible in that hot zone. Uh, one thing, uh, something that it might look like is you know you make that first big strip, whatever retrieve has been working for you, you do that, and then you maybe even use the rod tip to kind of animate the fly before you go ahead and pick up to recast. So um, that's something that'll help you kind of get into a rhythm. You kind of feel a kind of a routine start to develop where you you hit the bank, you make the first big strip whatever retrieve has been working for you, work yourself through that. And then before you pick up the fly, use the rod tip to kind of animate it. Cause there's a lot of uh, flex and suppleness to these rods where even on a fast action and stiffer rod, you can kind of jig it around and get that streamer to animate a little bit. Go ahead, pick up and get right back in the zone. Could you maybe talk a little bit about what scenarios or like sky conditions when I would want to fish bright and flashy, more natural, darker stuff, things like that? Totally. I think it goes, uh, there's just, you know, the, the common mantra in fly fishing, you know, streamers that bright day you're going to use a brighter streamer, darker day you're going to use a darker streamer. So in the mornings we were throwing kind of those more olives, uh, brown, uh, that's probably one of my favorite color combinations. Um, I always like a little bit of flash on my streamers uh, as well as some kind of eye, you know, whether it's a, a dumbbell eye or maybe like a fish skull eye or, you know, something that's going to make the fly look more realistic. Um, having another little spot, uh, other like a hot spot in there can also be, you know, very effective. Um, so I'm really considering that when I'm at the bench uh, and I'm tying streamers for whatever I'm fishing. Um, with the sink tips that we're using, we don't usually need a lot of weight to the flies, um, but that can also be another factor that might change throughout the day. Maybe we do need a heavier cone head to get down into like a deeper, darker hole. Um, as to where the morning, you know, I don't think we needed a lot of weight to kind of get the job done while throwing a sink tip. Uh, my sink tip is around, you know, three inches per second. Um, I think anything more than that might be a little bit overkill, especially for the conditions that we have today. So we kind of talked about, you know, leader type. Um, as far as tippet and tippet size, um, I think fluorocarbon is definitely must. You know, it's very abrasion resistant. It's very hard to see in the water. Um, and typically, I'm using heavy stuff. You know, we're throwing these big, you know, articulated flies. 
Um, I'd say anywhere from like a 12 to a 20 pound uh, fluorocarbon is going to work for you. Um, and we want that because one, it's not because we're spooking fish. Uh, you know, the thicker, thicker tippet is not going to spook fish because we are getting that predatory response. They, they see it hit the water and they're on that fly, you know, very quickly. So tippet size is not a big deal. Um, and then really making sure that you have enough strength to kind of pull, you know, flies out of the bank, out of trees, out of sticks that you might hook up on. Uh, you want to get that fly back. You know, typically streamers are a little more pricey. Uh, you want to be able to get that fly back. So use heavy gear. Uh, make sure you get that fly back and you can get it into the water again and start fishing. All right, guys, so now that we've covered uh, what a fall kind of outlook looks like from a river report perspective and the types of uh, tips, tactics, and techniques that you might use to start catching some bigger fish on streamers, let's talk about the kind of gear that you might be using. So, like we said, stiffer, fast action rods in that seven to eight weight range are going to be great for turning over heavier articulated streamers as well as the sink tip lines that we like to use. Um, not to mention it's important to consider your leader and tippet setup. So like Max said, if you try to have a longer or lighter leader, um, it's really not going to be effective or efficient for turning over those bigger patterns that you'd like to fish for bigger fish. Um, so having a more short and stout leader, like he was saying, either the salt water fluorocarbon or something like a five foot streamer leader that, uh, that our friends over at Umpqua have available, that's going to be a nice stout uh, energy transfer from that sink tip fly line to a bigger articulated streamer pattern or even smaller streamers. It's going to help you stay in contact with the fly as well as let the line dictate where the fly is. So that sink tip line is where you want your fly to be affected as far as depth goes, not the leader. So if you have too much leader, you're not really using the line to the best of its ability.
All right, guys, thanks for tuning in and watching this video. We really hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you're looking to improve your own streamer fishing game, make sure to go to avamax.com and get into that streamer fishing category. That's where you're going to find all the flies, line, leader, and tippet that you need to be more successful with your own streamer fishing. Now, if you want to watch more fly fishing and outdoor related videos, including our weekly fly tying Tuesday tutorials, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. If you like this video, let us know. Give us a comment and drop us a like. Thanks again, and we'll see you out there.